But the Astros lose two out of three of the Seattle Mariners. Three and three on the homestand. They had an opportunity, Paul, to win the series. But things go bad in so many different ways again in yesterday's game. And it's not great. Not great, Paul. Not great. It's it's worse than not great. It's worse than not great. It's worse than not great? Yeah, it is. This yeah, is, this is, is a disastrous series loss. So, look, season's not over. Plenty of time left. Blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, it's we're just doing the same thing over and over again. You know? To go back to conversations that we've had, we are in our own version of Groundhog Day <laughs> where something is effing up for this team on a nightly basis. Whether it's the lack of offensive production, two hits on Saturday, Mm -hmm. didn't get anything going until late on Sunday. Really, on Friday, most of those runs came courtesy of the Mariners crapping themselves, walks, uh, bad defense. I mean, they gave you a game on Friday. You should be leaving this weekend having been swept with a day off to sit and think on it. Here you are. Um, Sean, uh, the, the, the dump button, is that ready? Is that ready? I, I think it's always ready. Okay. I think. Can the relievers do their fucking job? Is it that hard? Can they do their job? Can they do what they're paid to do? Josh Hader's making $95 million. This guy is on this roster for the next four years. He sucks. He sucks. O2 count right down the middle. What are you doing? I don't know that much about baseball, but I think it's a bad idea on an 0-2 count to throw the ball right down the middle. That's just a thought. So right now, I'm wearing the Seattle Mariners Trident in studio. This team blows my mind how there are so many people on it that are highly paid that can't do their job. The offense is better than this. I get it. The Mariners pitching is really good still. And the bullpen, it's a nightly occurrence. It's a Brayu before Josh Hader. It's ridiculous, Joe. I mean, we're going to keep doing this, and I suppose that my energy and enthusiasm for each of these rants is going to taper down a little bit. But for God's sakes, please do your job. It is not that hard, but it is made hard. Every single day, the Astros find a way to make it difficult for themselves. They can't do anything... Well, collectively, even if they have little, I mean, look at John Singleton, like what John Singleton has done as his first stretch as the first baseman of the Houston Astros is a huge win for this team. <laughs> That's the old, it's thing. a huge win. The for only this team. thing that was good this weekend. Tucker still very good, but he had some nice plays too. Yeah. Alvarez, Oof. where are you? Where's Alex Bregman? In a trash can. He's awful. Well, it might be time to bring those back. Please, please bring them back. Please cheat. Please do better. Like, like, please cheat again oh, ooh, and then damn. get caught. You hit him with a be better. Be better. It's the worst but thing the in thing the is, world. I don't know if they can. Like, the enthusiasm for these rants, like, they're going to they're gonna dwindle down. This is their last opportunity. Over the next 19 games, they play the Oakland A's. Mm-hmm. They play the Tigers and the Angels in 13 of the next 19 games. Now, the A's are a average baseball team this year. The Tigers are slightly above average. Both those teams, by record, are obviously better than you, and the Angels are either the same record or like a game worse. So you're in that class right now of bottom of the barrel, but this is probably your last stretch in which you have the opportunity to really Really figure it out. You play 20, 29 games in the next 30 days. It's This is your opportunity to figure it out. And when you play these teams, you have to take advantage. Because if they don't, th- there is no hope left for the 2024 season. You had the opportunity to win yesterday's game. John Singleton gave you the lead. And what you said, Josh Hader, he, he's not good. He's not good. And, and I don't Abreu understand. too. Abreu too. I mean, a balk? Uh that was Yeah, I think that was at questionable, least it was, but at least yeah. with Hater, it's one mistake. With Abreu, it's just more of the same. And I mean, I guess last year was an anomaly for Brian Abreu, right? I mean, this year 
seems to have been pretty figured out. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, like he's just he's just doing dumb stuff. And okay, yeah, the the balk debatable, I guess, but it's it's a symptom of him yes. this year where he's just not on it and he's not doing his job. And there are so many players on this team who are just not capable of doing their jobs. You mentioned Jordan, you mentioned Alex Bregman. There's a lot of guys out there that aren't doing it. And I mean, for God's sakes, John Singleton is carrying you right now. John Singleton, the guy who you signed to a contract before he ever played a game, who has a troubling bout with marijuana, right? Comes back. This guy, who is an incredible story, is carrying you on a team that features Jose Altuve, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker, Justin Verlander, the list goes on and on and on. You are 10 games under 500. What in the actual, doing it again, Sean, what in the actual fuck? What are we doing? What are we doing? It's crazy. They have so much talent. It, what the hell? Kugblitz says, it, it's funny how we said they had the 7th, 8th, and ninth locked up before the season. Now it's the worst thing about this team. Yeah, it is. It's the worst thing about this team. Because today should have been a simple show. You win two out of three. Hunter Brown. Vibes are back. Like, is like in disaster at one point in the second inning, but has little damage. John Singleton is the hero that this team needs. They find a way. They get they get the series win over the Mariners, and instead they blow it. Mm-hmm. And and they're they're 12 and 22. The vibes are the vibes are bad. And they're not going to get better. It feels like. Like, yeah, happy birthday, Jose Altuve. I'm glad you get to play your children, the New York Yankees, today. Hopefully you win two of the next three. Joe Spada said it best. He's like, we just need to keep winning series. Well, you won two series. You beat the Rockies and maybe and the Guardians, who might be like one of the most like overrated teams we've seen so far. They're winning a lot of baseball games. That series doesn't mean anything to me now because you lost the one that mattered. You lost one that mattered. Puente says zero confidence in a close game. Yeah, they're what one in ten in one run games this year. Yeah, how are you that bad in one run games? That that is also remarkable. I like, mean, it's you, it's clutch. Yeah, it's gone. You you can't say. I mean, you're right. It's such a stupid thing that's described because we can't really describe what it is. You know. The, the word clutch, like what does that actually mean? But it's it's clearly lacking. I mean, <laughs> your closers can't close games <laughs> and you can't hit when you need to. Yeah, clutch is like only used after the fact. It's it's always you weren't clutch or you were clutch. <laughs> it was it's never like, oh yeah, this guy coming up will be clutch. You don't know that for sure. And yeah, the the Astros they just the one run game stuff is is ridiculous. Make, they, they've gotten sense. over the uh extra innings. They got they got to win in extra innings. They now, did. now the one run game stuff is back. Yeah, yeah, and, and like with the back end of the bullpen, if the, if Josh Hader, Brian Abreu, I know Ryan Presley, you're just gonna get lumped into this, but I guess you're fine. Whatever. Uh, if these guys are gonna give up runs and blow games, eight blown saves this year. We don't. We don't need to be talking about the Astros with any expectations. Like, ultimately, it just comes down to those. Like Sunday, they they played the they played a winning game until those guys came in, and then they lost. That that's it. I mean, yeah, Hunter Brown. <laughs> they, they they played well enough to win until the sh- supposed strength of your team got involved, and then that's when things fell apart. I, I mean. We totally forget that Hunter Brown made things extremely stressful over the course of Sunday, but. A net positive, I guess, because he, he kind of bounced back from it. The first inning, a little dicey, he gets out of it. Second inning, as dicey as possible. I didn't know it was possible to be more dicey. I can't believe yeah. he only allowed two runs, but he only allowed two runs. Yes. You know, you're, you're the guys that are screwing it up are the ones that should not be screwing it up. Really, is that simple? And why do we feel like it's going to change? I, I don't know what the hell is different about this year. But it's a continuation of what we saw in September. And and this is the worst part, guys. This right here. I mean, you had to win that series because you can't give a team that you have terrorized for years more confidence. We're now at the point where we have to take the Seattle Mariners seriously. This is a conversation we had on my live stream on Friday. Even though... 
the Astros were four and nine against the Mariners last year. No one takes them seriously. No one. And on Friday, you understood why. Because the Mariners kept walking guys and making boneheaded plays defensively and base running blunders. I mean, Friday, they were about un as unserious mm -hmm. as you can see a team be. And then they took you down on Saturday easily. They took you down... Uh, yesterday as well, and they're 11 and five against you since that ultra competitive American League Divisional Series sweep, where you swept them, but it was not easy. Their pitching is better than your bats, and they're more than an obstacle. They are a bad matchup for you, and you just gave them all the confidence in the world because now they're beating you in your own ballpark. Yeah, it, it was an opportunity to just try to salvage where you're at in the standings right now. Like, yeah, being six games back versus seven games back, maybe it's not the biggest difference in the world, but, or I guess it would have been five games back. But trailing seven games in the division to the Mariners, to your point, like, they're not, they're not who we project them to be. Like, you see it on social media, like, it's just the Mariners. Everyone always keeps bringing up that, that tweet that went super viral a couple of years ago about, uh, how like Minute Maid's not used to having like it being sold out, and we're gonna be so loud, being and we're loud, gonna show right. them like what Seattle's all about, blah 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 nonsense. But at this point, they're one of the better teams. Like they're they're probably the best team in this division right now because they're healthy, and they're way healthier than the Rangers. And what you're saying with the rotation, they probably got one of the best rotations on. The rotation's baseball. awesome. I mean, it's 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 legit. They gave good. they gave you trouble all weekend. All five of their guys are good. Like, mm, I mean, th this Miller good. guy who is the new one. I, I'd never heard of him before this year, but look at his numbers. He's good, and look at what he was doing to the Astros yesterday. I mean, it's a World Series rotation. Like that, that's yeah, their how, pitching's great. Yeah, it, I, it, it is a World Series rotation. They just need they just need offense. But hey, I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the Astros. When you got relievers like this, <laughs> the Mariners are going to get offense in late game situations. Yeah, it, it, it disappointing uh, that this hater stuff because the Astros are this like uh, this roller coaster you're supposed to enjoy, but it's just it's been hard to enjoy it. Because mm -hmm. last week, we spent a lot of time talking about Josh Hader in a very positive light. You know, he got more than three outs. His last two or three appearances before yesterday were very good. But when it mattered most yesterday, he threw a sinker right down the middle oh, of the plate, yeah. and it got launched out of the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how much more you can hope that there is a, a turnaround coming for the Astros. I'm sort of where the bench was this morning where John and Lance were this morning. I forgot it's John and Lance. It's not the bench. Uh, they were basically looking at each other and wondering, right, well, what are we going to, what are we going to talk about now? And what are we going to talk about? Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, I, I see on the YouTube, uh, Rick Haywood's like, Oh God, I, I don't want to hear about this team right now. I know that the Twitchers are probably feeling the same way. Uh, there's no, there's no mock drafts to break down. Nope. Right. Uh, Position battles? We're, we're at the point now where, I mean, we're going to have to put together a list of what it is that we can talk about. I mean, my, my dating life, sorry, guys. Not, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's LinkedIn, not going to carry the load for us. I think, I think LinkedIn girl's out, okay? So, uh, the Josh Hader of, uh, yeah. of uh, this show's content uh, that we need to milk. I, all I know, like, we had high hopes for intern. Uh, uh, I almost said intern. LinkedIn girl. No. And, uh, but nope. interns are next. I'm just kidding. I'm not Matt Lauer. I think they're all boys. Uh, <laughs> oh, they are. I well, mean, uh, listen to, for the people that listen to this show. I mean, yeah. that's that's okay. all. That's always been a question. So, so we we'll, still we'll keep like, that question going. We, we just need to get through like the next month. Like the Astros. Do we? Yes. <laughs> because once the Astros get us to June 13th, then on June 13th the boys comes back. Oh yeah. The and boys. then three days later, House, House of the Dragon. Dragon comes back. Yeah. And then that's gonna carry us through the summer. I don't know though. That's like that's just. <laughs> That's, that's two days a week. No, it's, you know, and that's like two segments. That's right, not, exactly. I know it's not enough, and and people are gonna get mad at us for spoiling TV shows. People yeah, get mad we, at spoiling everything. We'd have to wait until like Wednesday to talk about. It. I, I don't know when either show is gonna come out, but you'd have to wait until like three days afterwards to be like, all right, we're yeah. gonna talk about it. That's true. Uh, they, they made the point, John and Lance, that this is sort of like pandemic times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been <laughs> such a long time since they've been this dreadful. But we don't have a last dance to save us. The exactly. last dance was the savior the, of the pandemic. The Tom Brady roast, the Kentucky Derby. We could break down the ponies, you know? 
We could talk about poker. I, I don't know. Well, we'll talk about the ponies a little bit today. A little bit later. We, we, we'll, I, I guess we'll we will. It was, it was a good race. I will say that. Yeah, more things. Start thinking of uh, what are like your what's your bucket list sports items like events to go to is kind of how we'll tie in the Kentucky Derby. 